just to really quickly wrap up, I think we're running low on time here, but just to cover off what we talked about, obviously scale and growth is, is what makes China special and, and unique. Um, third party sales platforms are not buying from your traditional retailers, they're buying from third party. Purchase motivations, the usual price convenience, but also location, a lot of them don't, aren't serviced by stores, and fakes. Um, key to have integration with your websites and social media and mobiles, increasingly relevant in China, and uh, trying before they buy. What it means is China's consumers are becoming more confident and they're going online for research. Um, they're searching for info not always where you think they may be, the, the likes of Taobao and Ctrip, etc. Um, the masses can be reached online and the masses can reach you. Setting up a retail, physical retail store is expensive and, and your money can go further online. Um, authentic brands thrive. If you've got a genuine authentic brand, it'll do well online if, if you have a good marketing plan. And, and you can also be nimble and have less reliance on distributors. So that's it. Any questions? Have we got time for questions, Roger? Or five minutes? Tough crowd. Yeah, I know, the 8 o'clock morning. I was going to have star jumps to wake you guys up. But. Mark, if you were setting up a Tmall store, yep. what sort of time um, is involved in sort of from way to go, you know, doing your research, setting up? Yeah, it, it, if you're already in China, it's pretty straightforward. You're looking at a matter of, I'd, I'd say, about six weeks. But if you are not in China already, you need to, and you need to have that trademark. And that all takes time. You need to have a registered company, a woofy, or or have an agent working for you. So those are the types of things that you need to consider. But as you say, doing the research is, I would highly recommend it. Just because something's selling well in, in Australia and other markets globally doesn't mean it's going to sell well in China. So I definitely, rather than just leaping in, do a bit of DD first and ensure there is a market. And do you need to localise your products and things like that? But Yeah, I, I guess it can, everyone's got different objectives for their social media. Some do use it for, for brands. I don't know if you've looked at, at a Weibo feed. Uh, Weibo is the microblog, the main, well, one of the main um, social media platforms in China. Um, there's a lot of advertising on it, and it's actually driving consumers away. They're going more to, to your WeChat now just because it's just so cluttered with advertising. But it, it, still, it still is an important platform to help educate, and, and a lot of people are going there for information, and that, as I said, they're trusting brands more that they see on there. It's, it's helping build familiarity. And, and things like wine, which does require some learning for, for a lot of consumers that may be not so familiar, it gives you an opportunity to, to help build that, uh, that education, talk about Q&As and things like that. So, yeah, so that, that would be a better angle for it as an outcome to go for the trust, the learning. I, I don't think the two are mutually exclusive. I think it, it, it's just playing it very well and, and rather than just being this constant sales, 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 is building their trust through education and building your brand and then occasionally throwing in some sales type posts. Got a few more minutes. Yep. Um, so you mentioned the word trust a fair bit. Um, I was just wondering if there are any sort of consumer protection laws or something put in place in China for any sort of consumer protection. Increasingly so. The government's always doing a lot of lip service to these new these new laws that are coming through. But I think probably the, the strongest um, consumer protection is the Chinese government. If you're a big brand 
and you're trying to trying to rip off Chinese consumers, the Chinese government will seek you out and they will, will try and keep you honest. You look at the likes of Starbucks right now, they, they charge a lot more for, for coffee in, in China than they do in, in America and, and other markets. And there's now a, a media campaign because obviously China, the government controls the media. They're doing a lot of negative Starbucks type thing. We saw it happen with Apple. Their guarantees are, are different in, in China versus other countries. And, so they really hammered Apple recently, and Apple's share has gone from more than 9% a little uh, over six months ago to less than 5% in China now. Um, KFC, Nike, there's a lot of brands that, that are trying to charge that premium. One, they can get higher margins, and, and consumers prefer um, to pay for it. Like they, they have this mentality that if it's expensive, it's probably going to be good. But you need to balance that out between the Chinese government thinking, oh, you're ripping off our consumers. So it's, there's that. And, and also social media. When you, when you try and pull the wool over a consumer's eyes in China, they will very quickly find you out and they'll tell the world on, on social media. So whilst there are laws and sometimes are policed, I think the, the market's a lot more of a, of a, of a regulator than, than, than these laws. One minute, one question. It's a good question. Um, when I was looking, I wanted obviously China in the name, and I wanted something like we are very much, China Skinny started off as a research agency, and I wanted something that kind of reflected the news of China, the research, the insights, and obviously all those China insights, China news are all taken. and. I think it's more of a North American slang term, but it's like, what's the skinny on whatever? It's what's kind of the news about China. So hence China's skinny. But unfortunately, for about our first year as a site, probably more than half of our traffic was actually porn surfing. A lot of people looking up skinny Chinese girls and things. And <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but we're starting to, we're starting to get a little more of the real stuff.